hello. What's today, Tuesday? Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you? Hi, hi, I see you all joining, thank you. Um, this is gonna be a really special Instagram live. Um, uh, under the series of Joe Talks um, for Joe Biden, whom I love. And by the way, National Voter Registration Day today, please, if you are not registered to vote, go to IWillVote.com and register. Actually, even if you are registered, you should go and check your registration, please. Um, so today we are going to have a very special guest. We are going to have Kristen Urquiza, or Kiza, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, she's the co-founder of Marked by COVID. Kristen is an activist and an advocate for an equitable and just world. We love that. She works to protect tropical rainforests, the best antivirus to, fe to future uh, pandemics. Um, and as the deputy director of Mighty Earth, uh, after her dad, Mark, uh, died from COVID in June, she wrote his obituary and soon after she, she co-founded Marked by COVID, which is working with families impacted by COVID to hold politicians accountable for their pandemic failures and lies. Um, she spoke at the DNC in August about her, her father, um, and she said, my dad was a healthy 65 year old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump. And for that, he paid with his life. Um, Kristen's grandparents were migrant farm workers from Mexico and Oklahoma, and her father worked in the fields as a child. She grew up in the predominantly immigrant and Latino Maryville community in, in Phoenix. And she is a proud product of public primary education and the first person in her family to go to college. Uh, she is a graduate of Yale University and UC Berkeley's Goldman School of Public Policy, where she has her master's of public affairs. Um, she's just an incredibly, incredibly special person who is working towards trying to amplify um, the voices of those that we have lost uh, to this pandemic. Um, and so I'm really, really happy to uh, be speaking with her today. Uh, so let's try to find her. Um, by the way, hi, I see all of your sweet replies. Thank you. One day we should do this where I just pick like 10, 10 people that are, are watching and you go live with me and tell me why the election means so much to you. Um, okay, I am going to look here. There she is. We're just waiting for Kristen to join us. How's everybody doing? Hi. Look at how gray I'm getting you. I kind of like it though. I don't think I'm gonna go back. Maybe, maybe, maybe when I'm when we do the Who's the Boss um, sequel, I'll dye my hair black back. Um, but right now I'm kind of enjoying the gray. We're gray and Botox free. Scary. Um, and we're still waiting, so maybe it's her um, connection. So, are you around? Maybe. Where are you, Kristen? This is the most. Oh, she's unable to join. Let's try this again. Everybody, maybe if we all cross our fingers. Hi! Hi! There she is. Hi! I was over here saying, Alyssa, Alyssa! I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. yes. Oh my 
my god, I've had some super awkward Instagram lives before. <laughs> where, where, well, first of all, the whole like getting on it is awkward. And yeah. then they tell you, you know, the little thing, it'll, it'll say like, wave to your followers. And it's literally like I do it every time. And every time I'm in my head going, why am I listening to Instagram telling me? And you can see me go like, hey. Right, everyone. right. Um, uh, but thank you so much for, yeah. for doing this. Yeah, I had I had one um, once where um, my six year old daughter came in and started I had all of my like my ring light with my beauty light I had all my mm. ring lights and everything yeah and, and they were propped up on her books oh. and so she just started yes. taking her books down <laughs> in the middle of the interview and so I you know went from looking 40 something to not yeah um, how are you, you look doing how are you doing during this time it's hard. I mean, I'm trying to stay positive. Um, how are yeah. you trying? How are you staying positive? Well, I'm writing. So I'm writing That's things good. I'm grateful for every day. And before I go to bed, I spend a moment thinking about gratitude because there are so many things to be grateful for. Yeah. Although we are in an important fight right now. Yeah. And it is very easy to forget about the things to be grateful for when you're like in the thick of some other emotion, right? Like I have oh, very, totally. very, very bad anxiety. And so when I'm in like the throes or crisis mode with my anxiety, um, I have to remind myself to to take inventory of, of all of all of my amazing blessings. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to see it sometimes especially when there's so much going on in the world that it just feels, it feels insurmountable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or am I the no. only one that feels that way? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it's like everything that was still wrong with our world or that we were trying to fix is still that way. But now we've overlaid a pandemic on top of right. it. And right. we're, you know, just a few weeks away from the most important election of our entire lives. And so it's a lot to kind of... I can't believe it's here already, <laughs> no. right? Yeah. Um, but I have some questions for you. We, we, we hit a milestone this, this week um, uh, with COVID uh, cases. Um, there are more than 200,000 uh, deaths. And I don't know, you know, it feels like it didn't have to be this way. You're right. Do you, right? Yeah. Is that I how didn't you feel about it too? It, it didn't have to be this way. That is exactly the phrase that I have been saying every single day since my dad got sick on June 11th. Every single day I found my say, myself saying, this should not be happening. And not just him being ill, but the whole process and the skyrocketing numbers and the consistent and the, the, the downplaying. Testing. The testing yeah. alone. I mean, I had COVID in, in March and April, and I've, I've never been so sick in my entire life. I had two negative COVID tests. Wow. Before. I mean, it was in the beginning when we were dealing with the whole, like, they didn't know if they sent all the right swabs mm -hmm. and all of that. So I don't know if that was the reason, but it was terrifying to know and to feel so like we just didn't have leadership. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. The, the fact that our leaders were at the golf course, the fact that Donald Trump consistently downplayed the virus, and now we know, lied about what he knew. Right, right. Um, and people you know, are still depend defending him. Which is out. It's in his own voice where he yeah. is saying... He is saying that he knew that it was airborne. He is saying that he knew how deadly it was. Like, how did you feel when you heard that tape? Oh, my gosh. I mean, in one regard, I was not surprised. But in the other, it just really brought home the, me the message that he doesn't care. Donald Trump does not care about people like my dad. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about anybody other than yeah. himself and his own political prospects, as well as, you know, the stock market, uh, which is why he said, I don't want things to panic. People don't panic. Stock markets panic. That's like a stock market term. 
And so it's just been really clear since day one and just reinforced with those Woodward tapes that he is unfit to do this job because he cannot care about anybody other than himself. I'm so sorry that you lost your father through this tragedy. Um, but I, I was so taken and inspired by the fact that you took that, that pain and that anger of that tragedy and you harnessed it into something really um, hopeful and, and filled with love and, and leading from a place of, of love. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the decision in going public mm -hmm. um, with your dad's story and, and why you decided to um, start the organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so glad that you recognize that it's driven from love. It of took course. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, all, all, I believe all good leadership is driven from a place of love. And that's mm -hmm. why I am, I am supporting Joe Biden. And that's what we are lacking right now. Mm -hmm. But I want to, I want to hear your yeah. story. Tell me, tell me. Well, um, yeah, so it was driven by love, love for my dad, love for my country, love for fellow humanity and, and deciding to be public and launch marked by COVID. Um, in some ways I didn't feel like I had a choice. I saw around my childhood community, the disproportionate impact the virus was having, not just only on my family, but on our neighbors who were grocery store workers or worked in the fields. Um, the folks who didn't have the privilege to Netflix and chill, but instead were part of the skeleton crew of the economy, making sure that we had, you know, fresh organic vegetables on our table and, you know, my background is in community organizing, which basically means that I'm professional and professionally trained to ask people to stand up for themselves. And I just kind of had this come, you know, to the light moment where I thought, wow, this is my, this is my moment where I need to not ask somebody else to stand up for themselves, but ask myself to stand up mm. for my family, mm. for my community, for my dad and for my country. And so I just stepped into that moment and I haven't really looked back. Well, it's amazing. And thank you so much for doing that work. Um, you're an environmentalist by profession, uh, working with Mighty Earth, which works to protect forests, uh, conserve oceans and address climate change. Um, I mean, I gotta tell you, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> After this week in California, because that's where I am, I mean, I guess the question is, what changes do you want to see environment, in environmental policy? And, and how do you think that, that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will get that job done? I mean, it's been a hard week for folks who care about the environment, seeing the fires rage across the entire western part of the United States. And for me, I think there's a couple of easy solutions that get not only at climate, but actually get at the pandemic as well. So one thing that folks don't know is that a lot of these pandemics, including we suspect this one, is because of tropical deforestation. And uh, those, you know, the forests of the Amazon and other majestic places are basically being bulldozed right now to make way for cattle or soy or other products that then come into the supply chains of the US, Europe, Japan, and other places. And so one way that we can actually tackle about 15 to 20% of climate change uh, pollution, as well as prevent future pandemics, is to stop deporting, uh, importing products that are linked to deforestation. And that is something that could be easily passed as both a win for the environment, but then also a win for future stopping future pandemics. Yeah, I know World Wildlife um, Federation does a lot on on this. And I want to just really take a moment so that our viewers can really understand what's happening. So because mm -hmm. they are coming in and um, and and taking down trees in the rainforest, for farmland, mm -hmm. correct? Yep, yes. That we are um, putting a lot of animals 
um, out of their homes, yes. which makes pandemics jump mm -hmm. from animals to humans um, even faster or easier. Is that correct? Uh, Am I getting that right? Yes, that is a really good succinct way to put it. The one caveat I would put is that the farmland is not to like quaint little farmers. It's to huge corporations <laughs> that then end up right. running. <laughs> <amok>. Right. <laughs> um, right. So, I mean, they're, they're, the, the World Wildlife Fund is doing like an amazing job trying to educate, empower people in, in also how, how our daily choice, and this is something I always, it's hard to remember that our daily choices are impacting so much. It is right. so vast and really just choices that we make um, in the grocery store that are easy for us to shift gears and make different choices if we're given the information can really make such a huge difference. So what are you hopeful as far as um, a Joe Biden and Kamala Harris administration and what they will set forth to help this? Um, a couple of things. I mean, first, there is an easy solution of preventing products from entering into our supply chains uh, that that are linked to deforestation. The EU is addressing legislation like that right now. We like palm oil, things like palm oil, right? Palm oil, rubber, soy, cattle, um, all linked to deforestation. And then second, um, a climate bill. We need a bread and butter climate bill to remove, you know, to get us off of dirty, dangerous fossil fuels. And I believe that these two um, things are win-win and something that the Biden-Harris administration are the team to do. I mean, how do you think we got to this point where there is such different ideologies about what needs to happen with climate change? It's so frustrating. And it's the same thing with the pandemic. When you sit and you look how this has been politicized in a way that it did not need to happen. We, the, wearing a mask should not be a political statement. <laughs> right, it's like wearing a safety belt or taking off your shoes right. before going saving, onto the airplane. Saving the planet <laughs> yes. should not be a political it's statement. In right? our best interest, yes. <laughs> All of us together, I mean, if yes. we can't agree on those things, is there any hope for us to gr agree on, on on other issues, I mean, it's so disheartening to me that that this is happening right now. Um, although I do have to tell you that Kamala being nominated for vice president um, feels like a monumental landmark. Oh, it's huge, right? It's and huge. And, and I think, I think maybe it's a turning. I'm hoping it is a turning point in our history um, for you know to be a catalyst for coast to coast change and um uh so i you know i'm very hopeful that this administration well we have no choice they have to they yeah. really they have we time is running out Tra time is running out time That's is exactly running it. out americans need jobs mm -hmm. um for all of the viewers who who are uh, who care about this issue which should be everyone um, I would highly encourage you going to JoeBiden.com and looking at his climate change platform um, and what he plans to set forth because it really is it's all about not only saving the the, the world and the planet um, but also about creating green jobs um, and you know when we're living in a time where 13 million Americans are out of work we we need we need those jobs and and joe and kamala have an amazing amazing um plan for that you and your partner christine work together on marked by covid mm -hmm. um donald trump said he'd be a friend to lgbtq americans um your thoughts on that <laughs> um but friend, um, if you mean enemy. I mean, this man does not care about the LGBTQ community. And quite honestly, like one of the things that Christine and I talk about is if he is reelected or manages to steal the election, we will not feel safe here, not only because we've been, um, you know, 
visible and publicly out there about our critiques of the president, but, you know, unhinged without worrying about a reelection, um, what is going to stop him from taking that a step further? And so I am worried not only for my own safety and well-being, but for yeah. literally millions of other people who, you know, may not live in a, a community that's um, supportive of who they are. And that's not the country that I was grown up to believe we are, you know? No, and the thing is, is that um, sometimes it's so hard to get people to understand that politics is personal mm -hmm. when you get down to the, you know, people think, oh, my voice, my vote's not going to matter, and blah, blah, blah. First of all, I think what we saw in 2016 with 77,000 votes deciding the election should prove that your vote does actually matter. But also, we need to be reminded, you know, with human stories, like the, the story of you and your father, or you and Christine, um, or, or, you know, fighting for, for a better education and equality uh, in, in education for children throughout the country, that, that politics is very small. Yeah, and it is about the personal. Yep, it is about you know. So I would I would ask everybody who's watching to look at their lives right now and to s try to figure out if if this is what is fulfilling to them, if this is the world that they want to raise their kids in, or have grandkids in, or leave to their grandkids, and then vote accordingly because it really is. It's like the the micro makes up the macro. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and we sometimes have to be reminded of that. And stories like yours, I think, are such um, a huge reminder of that. So we lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg last week. And that was, I don't know about you, but um, I thought she'd live forever. <laughs> I wanted her to. Right. I mean, I would have volunteered organs <laughs> for this woman. I would have volunteered my husband. <laughs> Like if that would have made her happy, like Thursdays, like I'm, I'm <laughs> Go cool ahead, with her them. having him on Thursdays. Yes. Whatever <laughs> Ruth wanted, Ruth could have gotten. Right. But it's been, it's been really so, I never met her. Um, but to, to, to know how she walked amongst in this world filled with such compassion and grace and, and um, commitment and conviction. Mm-hmm. Yes. That did not waver. Like yeah. that kind of conviction, no matter what, what a blessing she was. What, what did her death uh, mean for you? How did yeah. you feel? Um, what, one thing I, I think about a lot in her passing is how her celebrity status or didn't really come about until, you know, she was older in life. And so she was pushing this boulder uphill when people didn't know who she was. And it's that conviction piece that is so inspiring. And, you know, and losing her right now during this time has just been super challenging because the last thing that we want to do is have Donald Trump elect another Supreme Court justice. And so I think the thing that I'm thinking about, and I'm just moving outside because it got a little loud in my apartment. No worries. <laughs> but the thing that I'm really you know, thinking about with her loss is that we have to not only vote for ourselves, but we need to vote for Ruth and do what Ruth would want us to do, which is to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are continuing to push that boulder uphill. And so someone you know, sent me the hashtag and it literally, I read the hashtag and I started crying. Honor her honor. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. isn't that just gorgeous? Yeah, it's so Anna. beautiful. But also, like, she hung in there a really long time for us. She did. And she didn't have a break, you know? And she, she fought. And she yes. fought. And there's something, um, something incredibly beautiful about that, but also, like, really tragic that, uh, that she felt that she couldn't rest. Yeah. But she felt like she had to keep going because our democracy was at stake. And if we all just gave 10% of what Ruth gave, 
Right. This would be a totally different, different universe. Different that, world. <laughs> that I know. We're working in. Yeah. So um, today's National Voter Registration Day, which, which um, I would just love for you to speak to anyone who's watching right now who feels like, oh, my vote doesn't mm. count. Or, mm -hmm. What would you say to those people? I wish I could have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with every single person who ever said that because it's, it does matter. Your voice matters. And the more that you use your voice, the more you'll find confidence in it and really understand the things that you love and that love you back. And I think vo voting is just such a great way to be involved in your community and your life and in really helping people around you. So, um, you know, to folks out there who may be on the fence, register, just try, just, just try it out. It's not going to cost you anything other than a little bit of time, but I bet you you're going to be much more satisfied in a couple of months once you've done it. The other thing is like, I've been thinking a lot about this and I haven't really found the words yet. So everybody excuse me if I, <laughs> if I bumble my way through this, but I understand a certain element of um, people who voted for Trump in 2016. Um, in, in the last four years, I've done a lot of uh, reflecting and talking to people on the other side who have shared with me what their motivation was mm -hmm. and how how they kind of felt left behind mm -hmm. by the democratic party and um and so i feel like i feel like the dnc i feel like joe biden i feel like kamala harris all of uh, all of these people understand what went wrong and 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 they know that we can't go back to the way that it was and that we have to build back better and it's the only way that we're going to be okay as a country and so i i want to i, I want to say to people it's it's okay what you decided in 2016 mm -hmm. you don't have to dig your heels in now seeing and knowing everything that you know like search within your heart, search within your heart to do the right thing now. And by the way, your family doesn't have to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? I mean, that's still like, an issue though there, for that many is. It's people. An, yeah. It is an issue. Well, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to vote because, because my family wants me to vote for Trump and I'm not sure if that's the way. And honestly, you go into that polling booth and you shut whatever you need to mm -hmm. shut. That is your time. you follow your heart mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. make the decision that you know is right for not mm -hmm. only this country, but for your family and for those who are oppressed or those who are not, that don't have the privilege. And so I've been thinking a lot about that. Like you don't have to tell people who you voted for. And you don't yeah. have to, you can make a new decision. You yeah. don't have to dig your heels into the old decision. Yeah. Uh, do you have a voting plan? I do. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I love that question. And it's something that I ask everybody all the time, yeah. too. Um, I mail in my ballot. I've been an early voter. And so once I get it in early October, I plan to fill it out on that day and actually take it to City Hall because I want my sticker. <laughs> Where do you live? What state do you live in? I'm in uh, San Francisco in California. Oh, so you're in California yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, my, mine is, is similar. Um, normally I like to go vote in person, but because of, of COVID and, and my kids and my parents being so uh, close, um, I don't want to put anyone in jeopardy. So um, I am going to vote early by mail. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very excited about doing that. And, um, you know, voting at home is, it's nice. You can spend your time. You can look up the candidates. Yeah. You know, and, and we always have so many ballot measures. So I love to be able right. to look at and see who's endorsed what and kind of do my homework. Um, so but I would say anyone who's watching this, even if you're planning on voting in person, I would go early because yes. um, uh, you will, it will probably be uh, much healthier to go early because there'll be less crowds. Um, and the lines will be shorter, and we really want to spread out the many different ways 
um, and take advantage of the many different opportunities we have and ways in which we can vote this year. I think that that's really important and we need to continue to make voting easier mm -hmm. for all people. I agree 1000%. Well, the most important I mean, thing, just vote, just do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Um, are there any other of Joe and Kamala's policies that you're really excited about um, that you think yeah. are, are special and worth chatting about? I would love, I, I don't know if you've dug too much into their public health job core. I think no. it's, <gasps> it's, on, tell me, it's, tell me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's part of their COVID response plan. And especially since, you know, I've been so active in the COVID space, I've been thinking about how do we approach this so that we're getting at these fundamental issues, these undergirding issues in which are impacting folks. And the Public Health Job Corps, which is part of their COVID response plan, is let's make sure that front, uh, frontline workers are taken care of, um, that they have the sick time that they need, that they have, um, you know, the, yeah, the, all of that. So that they're taken care of, so that we're taken care of. And let's also create an entire cadre of new jobs in the public health space because ring, 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 even before the pandemic, we were understaffed in a public health space to ensure that we are creating, again, this build back better, but creating sort of like a civilian conservation corps of public health workers so that we're in a position to better protect ourselves and pe put people to work in good paying government jobs, which is a pathway to the middle class in particular for people of color throughout our entire lifetime. So I'm excited about that piece. I love I love that. I didn't know anything about it. And I'm going to go read up. Um, and those of you at, at home who are watching, you could go to JoeBiden.com. Um, also, if you're interested in text banking, phone banking, you can volunteer with the campaign. Um, also, I'm a really big fan of the Vote Joe app. Do you have that app yet? I Kristen? do. I love it. So it's very sneaky because <laughs> it goes into your phone book and tells you who is not registered to vote mm -hmm. from your family and friends. Which so. I think is such an important thing for us to be doing is bugging those friends, family, relatives. Well, yeah, we talk about phone banking all the time. We don't talk about it do it doing it within our own circles mm -hmm. right so this is really gives us the opportunity and i grew up in arizona so i've got some really important people to vote you really do arizona is looking really really great mark kelly is such a great candidate and i was just actually on a um a phone call uh where where volunteers were phone banking riling them all up getting them all excited and motivated but um, yeah, so I highly recommend people checking out the, the Vote Joe app. And Kristen, thank you for everything that you are, everything that you do, and for transforming um, your tragedy, your personal tragedy into power um, and strength. And uh, we see you and we appreciate you. And thank you so much. Well, Alyssa, it's been fabulous to chat and I see you too. And thank, thank you, you so much for your activism and, you know, making some time to get to know me a little bit. It's been of fun. Course. Let's do this and again sometime. If I can help you in any way, you just reach out. I'm so thrilled to have met you. And if I could be of service, please let me know. All right. Well, let's um, make sure we elect Joe and yes. Kamala. Yay! Vote Joe! Thank you. Mwah, bye, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Thank you for watching. I love you all. The most supportive people in the world you are. And I appreciate each and every one of you for being here, for being in my life, um, and for giving me strength and support. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.